Hello, I'm Brian Morgo from the Hawk Migration Association of North America. I chair the data committee. You might have gotten a letter from Hamana talking about Hamana's response to Dunkadoos end of service. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, you might be wondering what I'm doing outside with a camera and a set of binoculars staring, staring up at the uh, sky. Um, if you're a hawk watcher, you already know. And as February, at the end of February, approaches the spring season will be here, and some are wondering what they're going to do if Dunkadoos no longer around. We're going to show you that you can enter data directly into hawkcount.org via your phone. And uh, we're going to go inside this window. This is going to be very hard for the camera. But before we do, why don't we just take a look at our weather conditions so we know what to enter. Uh, very high winds today, probably about 25 miles an hour. The skies are partly cloudy, probably about 50% cloud cover. Humidity is 63%. Barometric pressure is uh, very low. It's 29.01. And uh, we can get the rest of the details inside, but um, I'll meet you inside. All right, now that we're out of the weather, we can show you how we can use our phone to enter data. Be nice if we could be inside in the warmth and out of the wind to observe hawks, but it doesn't really work that way. So. Um, let me just explain how we do it at Allegheny Front Hawk Watch, and um, then you can start to think about how your hawk site is counting. First thing is, we use written data. So this is our daily sheet. We have uh, the counter of the day, the date, all the other uh, stuff that's on hawk count already. So the winds, uh, wind speed, wind direction, temperature, and so on. I already started to enter those. So I'm going to be counting out there for, we'll say, an hour. The wind speed, we'll say, it was a 4. Wind direction is west, temperature negative 3. Humidity 63, and so on. The weather that we had out there. So we're doing this anyhow. What I like to do, though, at the end of every hour, or the beginning of every hour, either way, is enter that directly into my phone. And that allows me to A, let people know that I'm at the site. And one of the reasons why this is important, if you're not already using Hawk Count um, as you're counting data, we're at the Allegheny Front Hawk Watch, which is about two hours from Pittsburgh, and uh, we have people that come up from Maryland, and maybe they're going to drive three hours. One of the things that they need to know is if it's even worth coming up. Sometimes it's so foggy, there's no need to be up there. If they've driven three hours for fog, it's it's a disappointing day. So um, we like to try to get our data entered immediately. And the way that I do that is I'll just take a, just any phone. And in this case, first thing I need to do is get this to turn on. And then I'll go to hawkcount.org. And then I have to enter in data entry. So the very first thing that I always do is I make everything bigger so I can see it. So now I can see data entry. Once I have data entry, I can click on that. From there, I need to enter in um, all of my information. So uh, it'll say for the date, now you'll see the same screen that you would see if you were using a computer. I enter that using my phone when I'm outside. Now, on a day like today that is so windy, I might go into my car, um, and that might be helpful. If not, I can do it out there. I'm just going to blow things up as large as I can. I wear glasses now, so I have a hard time seeing if it's small. But once I have it zoomed in like this, I can pick my times. Let's just say that I was doing that from 9 a.m., and let's say I'm going to go to... Um, 4 o'clock p.m., that's now entered. Now, for the weather, one of the very first things that I like to do is let people know that I'm up there counting and what the weather conditions are like. But I'm not very good at typing on these. So what I do is I hit the weather summary, and then I'll hit the little microphone button. 
windy this morning with, and you could see it just starts typing for me right away. To help us better see what I'm doing, I'm gonna walk around and hold this phone in front of this camera. That way you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna go into my weather summary right here. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger so I can see it. I'm also gonna end up hitting the microphone and that'll pick up my words and convert it to text. So I'm gonna click on this. Strong west winds this morning, gusting up to 35 miles per hour, period. Temperatures starting at 24 degrees with partly cloudy skies, period. I'll then hit my microphone and turn that off. I can then go up, and if I would like to put visitors in now, observations, uh, I can, but I'm going to save that for later on. I can always come back. Then I'm going to hit my save data. I can see right away that I'm ready to go. And if anyone goes on to hotcount.org, they'll see that front uh, display of our data. Then I can go to count entry. I'll blow this up a little bit larger, and this is exactly what we would see on hotcount.org. I'm going to go to wind speed. Let's just say we're going to pick that it was a, a five, our wind direction. Let's say that's going to be out of the west. Temperature, I'm going to put that as um, negative, let's just see, negative, we'll put four degrees Celsius, humidity, we'll put 63 degrees, barometric pressure, we'll put 29.01, cloud cover, we said it was 50%, visibility, We'll say that's 15. And then precipitation. I could even put a uh, wind-driven dust or sand, snow, whatever. The flight direction, I don't have a bird yet, so I'm not going to put anything, nor height of flight. And in terms of the counter, I'm going to choose myself. And no one else is out here with me. Now, this is where we would enter our bird numbers but it's the beginning of the hour, so I'm gonna wait till later to put those in. So I could either hit save this period's data right away, like that, now that's saved. If I didn't wanna do that, and by the way, I can always go back, let me just show you. There is my nine to 10 o'clock hour. I can click on it and bring me right back to where I am. I'm gonna close out of this for a moment. In terms of actually counting the birds, I'm going to put my phone away for the rest of the hour. Now you can, as you used to do on Dunkadoo, every time a bird comes through, you can open it back up and change that number. I don't like doing that. Let me show you my system. And this is not the best system. It just happens to work for me. And so there's really no right or wrong way, but I actually prefer this method. I used to enter every bird into Dunkadoo, but sort of had to have faith and Dunkadoo was, was doing everything correctly. Or um, I would sometimes think, wait, did I, did I enter that bird in correctly? Um, you know, I'm looking at the sky, looking at this. So I actually feel more comfortable doing this system. First thing that I do and what I always carry with me. Now I was wearing a big coat earlier, um, but I have this in the front pocket. I also have my pen. So whenever a bird goes by, First thing I need to do is identify it. So often, and by the way, I don't use glasses when I'm identifying birds. So I look up and I see a bird and it's a sifter and, and maybe I figure out, oh, it's a Cooper's hawk. So what I then do is I pull out my paper. Normally, if I hold it back far enough, I don't need to use my glasses. And then on my paper, let me just show you what this looks like. I have each one of the species listed. I've got black vulture, turkey vulture, Osprey, Bald Eagle, NH for Northern Harrier, and so on. Sharp-shinned Cooper's Hawk. 
Now, the reason why I like using this page is because then I can get other things that I like. And these are in the exact order that they would be um, seen on hawkcount.org. But I also like to put hummingbirds, HB, and dragonflies. And then, of course, my butterflies. We, I have a monarch um, count going on, but I have all my other favorite butterflies that I'm going to count. I'll put a link to this somewhere after the video that if you'd like to use this or modify it and make your own. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, so this is what I use each hour. So if I saw a Cooper's Hawk, I would end up putting a single line for Cooper's Hawk. One little line. I do a, a single slash for each bird. Oh, there's another one. I look, I can identify, it's another Cooper's Hawk. So I have a system, and my system is, I'm going to put another line there. So that is not 11 to me, and this is what you just have to make sure that you're doing. Oh, there's two more, three more Cooper's Hawks. What a great day. So let me just show you how I would take care of three more Cooper's Hawks. I would end up putting a slash through them like this. I put my four and a slash. Now, let's say that maybe it's broadwing season and you're expecting a lot more than just five birds. So I'm looking up there and what do I see? I see a broadwing hawk. And in fact, there's a bunch of them. See, here's what I do. I use clickers. In fact, those that know me know that I'm always carrying my clickers. Now I can look at the broad wings. I can see them streaming out. And as they stream out, I'll just click away. So I mean, and then, okay. And I can click, click, click every bird that goes through there. And maybe I had 18 right there. By the end of the hour, I might have 100 or 1,000, whatever it might happen to be, depending on what site you're at. I can then use this clicker. And at the end of the hour, I will either write it on my page or I'll just go directly back into hawkcount.org, and I'll enter those. Oh, wait, there's another bird there. That looks like a bald eagle, and it's, a, it's an adult. So I'll go to my bald eagle, and I'll put adult. So bald eagle here, and I'll put an A right there, and then I mark the time right next to it. So this is my system that I use. And to be honest, I don't use this exact sheet when we have our golden eagles coming through. What I'll do is I'll end up having an eagle sheet that's just like this. Now, you might be wondering, um, why are you using such a small sheet? Well, this is the 9 o'clock hour, and I'll put my initials on here. For my 9 o'clock hour, this is what I'm going to use as the summary. But when I'm done, and I'm going to show you how I enter it in the phone in a second, I just flip it to the other side. I'll put a big X through here knowing that I'm done with that hour, and then I'll flip it to the other side. When I'm done with that hour, flip it here, and then I can flip it, oops, flip it this way. And if you haven't figured out, my page looks like this. I actually have eight hours worth of data, and I just fold them up, and therefore I can get through a normal shift of collecting bird data. So, um, I need to enter these in, so I'm going to go back around and show you how I'm going to do this. All right, I'm going to bring my screen back up here. And remember, this is for that hour that I had marked before. I'm going to go up to my Cooper's Hawks up here. And then I'll put five for my Cooper's Hawks. And then I had a bald eagle. So I'll go to my bald eagle and I'll simply put one right there. When I'm done with that, I simply go to the bottom and save this period's data. Now, if I'd like, I could go back and I could mark if there's something important that happened that hour. I could go to my raptor observations and I could put in my bald eagle save that data, and now I can end up going to 
my next hour. And then I'm ready to go. Now you'll notice that it already has the weather settings that I had for the previous hour. Often they're not going to change, like the direction of the wind isn't going to change. Usually my humidity will change slowly, cloud cover, and so on. I could leave those or I could change them. If other people are coming that are qualified observers that I know, I can select them here, and then I'm ready to go. I'm just going to stop it right there because I don't need to enter anything else. So at the end of the day, I have hour after hour, I've got my paper copy that I already always have with me. I could do the 10 o'clock hour next. And again, at the Allegheny front, we have our paper copy. Not all of our counters use computers or let alone, you know, use a, a phone slash computer. So, um, so that's how we get started. See here, I'm going to go back to my day's comments. Maybe I have other birds that are rather interesting that I've seen observations, or maybe I want to put visitors. I can type those in right away. I can, again, just use my microphone. Pileated woodpecker, comma, white breasted not hatch. And I can at least get this bird list started. Whenever I was using Dunkadoo, and again, Dunkadoo should receive a lot of credit, I never thought about recording data in real time, especially on a phone, until Dunkadoo came about. When they, when they started, I was convinced that this is the way to go. And Ever since then, I've been entering my data on the spot, live. And Dunkadoo had some really nice features. In fact, if I counted that bald eagle, um, especially for our golden eagles and our bald eagles, we normally try to get the age of the bird and any other important notes. So on Dunkadoo, we would have them set it up for us where we could end up having uh, four attributes and we could put that it was an adult and then I could hit next. The one thing I liked about this Dunkadoo is it would give that clicking sound. Maybe it doesn't have to be that loud, but it would let me know that I hit next. The thing that I didn't like about Dunkadoo, and I know a lot of other people do, is you can go up to the count here and it would give you a data sheet, tell you the total number of species, and it had all of these wonderful features. Um, I could go and it would give me species breakdown. Here, let me just go down here. It would make pie graphs for me right away. It would allow me to become the editor. I could go in and try and edit everything. And um, some people love that. I didn't. I don't like working on the phone. Some people like all the features. I want it as simple as possible. So this is my old phone, by the way. I'm using um, an Apple phone. That's what I'm recording on now. And once I got an Apple, I couldn't use Dunkadoo any longer. So um, this is an old phone, my new Apple. It's actually easier to work with, I think. But um, even if I could go back and use Dunkadoo, I think I'd, I would end up sticking with hawkcount.org. I just love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that I'm in control of everything. Sometimes, and, and this, this doesn't happen to everyone, but a lot of times during eagle season, we take our eagles pretty seriously and we try our very best to get them aged. We use this type of technology. Maybe I'm getting an identification. I realize that it's getting biased pretty quick and I can get a really good picture. I can take a few pictures. And then after that bird goes by, I can end up looking at the photo. I often, during eagle season, will have several people that are there that are helping to scan the sky with me. In fact, we might have them using their cameras. Well, during this time, we are trying to make the identification. Oh, we can see it's a juvenile, depending on how the lighting was. Often the cameras can pull that out. We now know that it's a juvenile, but it's time stamped whenever you would put things into Dunkadoo. 
Now, some people like that. I didn't because it would end up uh, either putting a bird into the next hour. Like if we saw a bird at 12.59 or something like that, or, or um, and then and then Dunkadoo went over the next hour, it would count that bird in the next hour. It might have taken us a few minutes to figure out that bird. Well, now it's being counted in the one o'clock hour or past one o'clock, but I actually saw it at, in the 12 o'clock hour and I was trying to put the attributes. So I put something and you could go back and you could, um, and, and it's a wonderful interface. But again, I don't like interfacing with the computer. I like writing it down. So for me, it was always better. I felt like I was in uh, more control. And I also, because I feel like a novice using one of these cell phones, even though I've been using it for a long time, I just felt like I was in control and I felt my data was more accurate because I was doing it because I just wasn't as comfortable with that. So even if I could use Dunkadoo on the new Apple, I don't think I would. I think I would stick with hawkcount.org. And it's kind of like it's the, the real thing, right? It's the, it's the thing that I used to go home and put into my computer. And remember, Dunkadoo, you couldn't put the comments, you couldn't put uh, things of that nature. So I would still have to go home and I would normally go onto my uh, desktop and I would type everything in. Um, here I can do it if I would like. I can end up putting my visitor names. I could actually walk up to them and say, would you like to be on the visitor list? And I'll just ask them to say their name and I'll hit the microphone. Often the, the text might be a little bit um, off on the spelling, but then I could just clean that up. Um, so again, if I had the opportunity to use Dunkadoo or a Trektelin, which is another service that's uh, very good, um, I think I would stick with hawkcount.org as it is right now. Now, Hamana is hoping to develop an app that will be a little bit more user-friendly for um, people, especially that like the technology. So we're going to give a, a strong push at Hamana, uh, hopefully within next year. We'll see. But even if they don't, I'm perfectly happy using hawkcount.org in the field. Um, again, this is my system, and whatever system that you think works best, you should use. Um, but I figured I would at least give you uh, something to consider before hawk counting season is here. And if I were you, I would practice a little bit. One of the nice features on uh, hawkcount.org, uh, let me just make sure that I'm not saying this incorrectly. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go into, see, I'm in Dunkadoo now. I want to go back to my Hawk count. Um, and let me save my data. I think at the bottom here, you can put abort and delete. And so that's what I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit abort, delete. And it's going to end up saying, you are about to abort this data for today. And I'm going to say, yes, I really do want to delete this day's data. And if I go home, I'm going to go to the main screen just to make sure. And look, I hope you can see that Allegheny Front Hawk Watch does not have anything up for that day. So um, I'm able to practice a little bit. And uh, maybe we can even set something up as a dummy account for people to play with. But Again, this is just one system. Again, we write on paper. We keep a paper copy. We also enter it into hawkcount.org. And some of us do it in real time. So this is how I do it. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments or anything else that you'd like us to answer, just let us know and we can do another video. So I hope this was helpful. And um, if there's any way that we can help you, just get in touch with us. All right. Thank you.